I watched you the video Trams Hate the other day, and I came across this article in today's Pink News. Now, I hadn't heard of Julie Bindle before, so I looked her up on Google, and I got the distinct impression that her opinions have played a large part, directly or and hand, in forming many of the views that you expressed in your Trans Hate video. And I suspect that much of the flack you received comes back to this resemblance. And amongst the drama background noise, there was some genuine outrage. People were deeply offended by what was said, and I think with good cause. Reading up on Julie Bindle, it seems to me that many of the causes she's championed over the years are worthy of praise. Unfortunately, quite a lot of the stuff that she comes out with is wholly misguided. Much of what she says plays to the caricature of lesbian feminist as man-hater which goes a long way to both undermining her arguments and arming those bigots who claim that feminism is about the oppression of men. Her views on trans people are odious. She speaks with an air of authority on a subject in which she clearly has no expertise. In particular, her dismissive soundbite, I don't have a problem with men disposing of their genitals, but it does not make them women, is cruel and insensitive and actually misses the point that the targets of her contempt actually are women. They just happen to have XY chromosomes. Now, you and she might like to argue that gender reassignment is mutilation, that it's unnecessary, that it's simply a product of a society forcing gender identity. But I'm rejecting that argument completely. For a person who is born genetically male but identifies as female, and who sees a penis when they look down, that can be very distressing. And similarly, for a person born as a female who identifies as male when they look down and see breasts, what they're seeing is a body that they feel doesn't reflect who they are at a fundamental level. The surgery to give the appearance of the genitals they feel they should have can help them feel more at ease in their own bodies, help to ease the conflict between who they feel they are and what they see in the mirror. And it's not an answer for every trans person, but it does provide comfort to many. The view that you express about gender reassignment surgery seems to be very blinkered and almost tailored to some political point. You don't seem to consider the feelings of the person undergoing the procedure or any benefits that it might bring. So I have to ask whether you would consider a post-mastectomy breast implant to be mutilation or a glass eye. Not many people would. Most people would consider it reconstructive surgery, performed with the aim of improving a person's life. And gender reassignment surgery is no different. Now, of course, there will be some people who regret making the transition. That's why the process of changing sex takes so long and involves living as the opposite gender, extensive counselling, and so on. Because surgery is so drastic and one way, safeguards are put in place. But cherry-picking examples where the person who has undergone the surgery regrets it is dishonest, as is trying to disguise a transphobic perspective as being concerned for trans people who are simply the unwitting dupes of evil doctors. The arrogance here is not of doctors helping people. The arrogance is in stating that gender identity is nothing more than a social construct, and therefore not real. That it's something we should be working around rather than considering part of our character. Gender identity might be something you reject for yourself, but not everybody feels the same. To want to deprive someone of taking a step that would genuinely help them to live a more contented, fulfilled life simply because you don't feel the same way and therefore disapprove of that is either bigoted or dictatorial. And to dismiss the motives of the doctors who perform this surgery as self-serving is mean-spirited and insulting. You've gone on to make another video in an attempt to clarify what you said you meant, but I don't think it helped. You're trying to defend the indefensible rather than going back to reevaluate your position. In the trans hate video, the stuff that you were coming out with really did sound like you were parroting the transphobic propaganda of Julie Bindle and her fan base. And in spite of what you may have meant to say, the video you made is transphobic. If it's not what you intended, 
then you need to be more careful in the future to ensure you sound sufficiently different from the transphobic figures that you don't get mistaken for one of them. And on the other hand, if you still believe in what you said, then rather than claim that you're not transphobic, perhaps you need to think about whether that's actually the case.